Hi, right, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics, and in this video, I'd like to review the earlier Prime Minister's questions as Liz Truss seemed oblivious to the fact she was digging herself into a deeper hole, though at least she didn't get stitched up by awkward questions from her own MP, so there's that. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, <laughs> my entertainment's back. My entertainment's back. PMQs is back for, for a little run until Christmas now. It was entertaining as well. It's worth noting, though, that this was Liz Truss's only second Prime Minister's Questions since winning the leadership contest. Due to a combination of the Queen's death and the party conference season, despite the fact that Truss has been Prime Minister for five weeks... This is only her second time at PMQs. And it's the first real PMQs test because her first was the day after becoming Prime Minister. So you couldn't really pin much on her then. She hadn't announced anything. But this time she had announced some policies, major policies, a budget statement, no less. A budget statement that is hanging by a thread right now. And Liz Truss began proceedings with an immediate U-turn on a U-turn. We are actually seriously going to need a name for these now because they're happening quite a lot. I think she is still winning on actual U-turns rather than U-turns of U-turns, but it's pretty close. Because Ye yesterday there was a suggestion that the government weren't going to ban no-fault evictions. Now, this was a manifesto promise and the plans had already been set up by Michael Gove. He'd already worked on them. It's all ready to go. And then there seemed to be a bit of a hint the government wouldn't be going ahead with it. Downing Street was contacted by journalists and they refused to commit to the move, which may as well have been them saying that they were dropping the move. They obviously thought better of it from the backlash because Trust then reconfirmed the policy in response to her first question from a Labour backbencher. But then on to Starmer's questions. Uh, I mean, so much he could have asked about. But the fallout from the mini budget had to be the main focus, of course. I saw someone drawing attention to an article in The Economist about Liz Truss just before the, the session. It said that if you take away the 10 days of official mourning for the Queen, Truss had seven days in control before she blew up her own government. That, they said, is the shelf life of a lettuce. And a lettuce might have been better at defending the government in PMQs as well. Starmer opened up by saying that her business secretary, Jacob Rees-Mogg, in an interview today, said that the turmoil in the markets was nothing to do with the budget. Or at least you couldn't say that it was definitely something to do with the budget. And I've, as I've tried to explain to a few commentators who tried to take the same line. If you look at the value of the pound against whatever currency you like, the dollar, the euro, those are the two main ones in terms of ones we trade with. There's a big old crater in it. If you go over the past month or so, you have to go more than a bit over a month. The big old crater in it. And you, you look at it and you think, as this crater started, what, what happened? What, what happened on the day when that crater started? But anyway, Starmer asked if the Prime Minister agreed. And then Truss came back by saying, she didn't say she agreed, by the way, uh, by saying, she had to take action on energy bills. That is a defence, isn't it? That is a, yes, it caused a mess, but I had to do it. And it's like, well, this is it. She did have to act on energy bills. Of course she did. She didn't have to do it with an uncosted policy, though, did she? And she didn't have to announce all the other tax-cutting measures that went with it, did she? That budget statement could have just been what she was going to do about energy bills. That was the only immediate problem she had. That was it. She also said that her government was protecting the economy. There was a lot of laughter from the opposition benches when she said that. And I saw our old friend from the Daily Mail, Dan Hodges, later on trying to claim that Truss had done a decent job in PMQs today. He was trying to say, oh, yeah, everyone's got it into their heads that Liz Truss is a disaster and blah, 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 and that's how they're going to see this. But actually, she did a decent job. And it's like, mate, when the op opposition benches erupt in laughter at any time, it's not a great sign for the government. But maybe the leader of their party is really witty. I don't know. But when they do it in response to something the Prime Minister says, and they did it twice, that's a really bad day at the office for the government. Doesn't matter what else you try and say. If the, op if, if the Prime Minister says a thing, and they do it twice, and the opposition benches erupt in laughter, that's bad. Starmer then went on to mortgage rates. He asked if she understood why people who might be paying like an extra £500 a month would be furious with her. And then she went on about energy bills again. 
Then she decided to dig herself into a bit of a deeper hole. Completely unforced error here. So she said that the energy package was the biggest part of the budget and Labour refused to back it. And it's like, well, that's not really a great line because everyone knows that Labour had an alternative. And the reason everyone knows that is because Labour came up with their alternative weeks before the Tories did. So it was in the public um, arena. We, we had polls run on it. That we know that the public were in favour of it. it. It was widespread. People know that. Instead of energy bills going up, they were going to stay the same. And instead of not explaining where the money would come from, there was talk of windfall taxes on oil and gas companies to help. But then she said something even more remarkable. She cited Labour back in the government's repeal of the national insurance rise yesterday. So insurance rise, uh, in, insur national insurance is a form of tax that went up under Sunak and Johnson. Liz Truss said she was going to reverse it and that's what happened yesterday. And, and Labour supported the move. And she's trying to claim, oh, you know, this, uh, Labour are cottoning on to our ideas. Oh, they've, they've, they've now that they've thought about it a bit, they've seen that it's actually the right decision. As if Labour had changed their minds. Starmer, I don't think he could believe his luck. He stood straight up and reminded Truss that Labour voted against the original national insurance rise. So, of course, they were going to vote for the reverse of it. And, and they pointed out, he pointed out that she voted for it. He said, who's doing the U-turn here? And this is what I meant when I said that Truss will be quite stunningly awful in PMQs, interviews, debates, whatever. She's too lazy to be on top of a brief. She's not clever enough to recognise ground that she should... She can't recognise the difference between firm ground on which she can stand and the, and the quicksand which she should avoid like the plague. That was an unforced error. She didn't have to bring that in. You know, at one point when Starmer was urging Truss to drop uh, what it's clear he's now going to keep calling the kamikaze budget forever... The Prime Minister opened up with, I'm genuinely unclear. Well, cue the second round of laughter from Labour MPs at something Truss had said. She was trying to say that she was unclear about Labour's position. She was trying to be sarky, but it backfired badly. Never say the words, I'm genuinely unclear as a Prime Minister, if you wish to be taken seriously. It doesn't matter. Don't assume people are going to listen to the whole sentence. People are going to clip that now. That's going to be used. The problem for Truss is that the only part of her budget statement that hasn't been attacked was the plan to restrict energy bills. So she's pushing that as the most important part of it, which is fine. OK, that's what you would do. The problem is that, as Starmer pointed out, Labour had the plan of freezing energy bills first. I mean, he could have explained that actually what we've got right now isn't an energy freeze. It will be next year. But right now it's not really a freeze because they went up this month. But the point was that nothing, that the only things Truss has announced that aren't being attacked are policies that, that Labour was pushing before her. So she can't claim that as a win because Labour was pushing it before her and theirs was better. Or, you know, you can argue the toss about what's better and what's not in politics, but the public were more in favour of Labour's plan. And Starmer also had a pretty good line on the different tax cuts as well. So we pointed out that Truss was protecting earnings from shares. So it's tax breaks on earnings from shares. And yes, you know, whenever I've mentioned this, people say, oh, the working people have got shares as well. Yes, some working people have shares as well. But let's be honest, when protecting that income, the Tories have in mind those who generate all of their income from them, not of some on the side. Starmer made the point that Trust was giving tax breaks to those who get all of their income from shares, like a certain Jacob Rees-Mogg, while working people were picking up the tab. And I think this will be a useful line with a lot of the public. The bottom line is that Truss's economic plans are very damaging. There's no real argument about that. Truss will try and claim that there's a net benefit to people. That's what she needs to do. Yes, there's this downside to it, but the upside's there as well. There isn't, <laughs> but that's what she's trying to claim. Starmer's pointing out that it's not ordinary working people who are the net beneficiaries here. But it was the final couple of questions that may raise the most eyebrows. So Starmer reminded Truss that during the leadership contest, she promised no public spending reductions. He asked if she was going to stick to that, because we all know she's not. Oh, absolutely, said Truss. And I thought, well, no, she's not tried to prevaricate. She's not tried to sort of hint that she's sticking by it, but not be. Absolutely, said unequivocal. You can't you can't misinterpret that. And I thought, OK, Truss has announced massive, uncosted tax cuts and spending plans for the energy bills freeze has to be paid for somehow. 
the assumption is that the updated budget announcement at the end of this month was going to include a lot of public spending cuts. It's the only way to calm the markets down. Remember, the markets don't care if your fiscal plans are good as such, just that everything is costed. Does it all work? The assumption was that the public spending cuts were coming. At the, at the end of this week, the Bank of England ends its bonds intervention. If the markets are still concerned about the government's spending plans, and if they insist on these uncosted tax cuts as well, you know, as, as no cuts to public spending, they will be, then we're just going to have more turmoil next week, aren't we? And for his final question, Starmer stood up and said that people know you can't fund tax cuts on the never-never. You know, the public will never forgive the Tories for this madness. And then Trust just banged on about growth again. Then it was Ian Blackford's turn. Now, I did wonder if he would bring up the Supreme Court case on the referendum. I was talking about that earlier today. Uh, you know, test out the new Prime Minister on the issue. Because we can assume that the government policy is still that as stated by Boris Johnson. It almost certainly is. But bear in mind, we can't be 100% certain because Truss hasn't officially formed the policy on it as yet. No one's asked her as far as I know. So we're just assuming that Johnson's policy holds. So maybe it would have been worth testing her. But Blackford obviously decided that the current economic shit show was too ripe to pass up. He urged Truss to first of all stop scapegoating the governor of the Bank of England in order to save the Chancellor. Truss said that the SNP should contribute to energy security by building power stations in Scotland. And I thought, oh dear, another open goal here. Scotland is famously self-sufficient when it comes to energy, has no need of any other power stations. It's England that's got the deficit, thanks to the Tories kneecapping the previous Labour government's renewable schemes. Not that Blackford seemed all that interested in the obvious comeback, because it was a sideshow, it was a distraction. His main point was not about energy security, it was about cost of living. Um, and, and he didn't want to get sidetracked, fair enough. So he talked about the worry of families not just working out how to heat their homes, but how to keep them as well. Referring to the problems, he particularly took the line of renewing mortgages right now. He said 100,000 people a year renew their mortgages. They're probably not doing that at the moment. <laughs> not many mortgages being given out at the moment. And Truss said again, she used her act, you know, she had to take action on heating and that the interest rates are rising globally. And again, it's the usual thing, isn't it? Oh, this thing is happening globally. Oh, I've got really high inflation. Oh, yeah, but it's happening globally. Yeah, but not as bad as here, is it? Oh, this is happening. Oh, it's happening globally. Yeah, but not as bad as here, is it? You know, and the common response. And it is, oh, there is a global recession, but there is a global inflation problem, genuinely. You know, and a common response to inflation is higher interest rates, certainly. But the rest of the world had the... See, our interest rates were rising according to the sort of inflationary measures beforehand. What's happened in the last few weeks was, and everyone knows it, down to that mini budget statement. The rest of the world didn't have a sudden increase in interest rates over the last few weeks when we did, did they? You know, everyone knows it's directly related to that budget state. The public even know that. Usually I get worked up about these things if, if there's a chance the public will be fooled by it. They're not. Even, even the mainstream media aren't trying to cover this up. She also said that economists said her budget would lead to growth. Now, this is based on an IMF. There's a lot of cherry picking going on in this latest IMF report. I may have to do a video on that. I don't know. But uh, one of the ones she was talking about, oh, they say these tax cuts of mine will lead to some growth. And it's like this assertion that economists say tax cuts will promote growth. OK, it's like the government claiming that their post-Brexit trade deals, you know, maybe worth a boost of a point something of a percent will boost growth. And it's like in isolation, yes, you collect these post-Brexit trade deals and you look at them and you go, it's worth about 0.4 percent growth to GDP in about 15 years. OK, right. But we lose 4% of GDP with our third country status with respect to the EU. So all those trade deals, you collect them there and you show, oh, this actually shows a, a boost to GDP that we couldn't have had if we were in the EU. And it's like, OK, in isolation, but the overall project shrinks the economy because it doesn't make up for that 4% loss. And it's the same with Truss's budget. What economists have actually said is the tax cuts can stimulate some growth, not as much as she's claiming, but the IMF also said the measures are still batshit crazy. That's not their exact words, that's mine. She's cherry picking the bits from the IMF report that she likes. The IMF have actually slated her tax cuts plan because it's uncosted. 
I saw GB News cretin this morning saying that the IMF said that her tax cuts would produce growth as well. Again, missing out the part where they said the, ta the uncosted tax cuts represent, I'll use their words now, a material threat to the UK economy. In terms of questions from other MPs, I was wondering if she would be challenged by her own. You know, Trust got away with it, I think, by and large. She didn't get any really awkward questions from her own backbenchers, which may indicate that for now they're happy that she's responding, you turn on the right policies, and that it's better not to challenge her too robustly publicly unless they absolutely have to. So give her an easier ride as long as she behaves herself. Uh, there was a little nudge. There was one Tory MP who sort of hinted about the energy saving promotion that she ruled out, but she dodged that one easily enough. But the very final question was from a Labour MP who noted that the polls showed a majority of people wanting a general election now. It says, will the Prime Minister call one? Truss said, <laughs> exact words, the last thing we need is a general election. Now, if by we she means Tory MP, she's dead right there. I gather that as soon as PMQs was over, Truss headed straight to the tea rooms. Uh, that's not usual for Prime Minister. They'd normally head back because they've got meetings and things like that. But basically what she's doing here is going round her MPs, gauging reaction, trying to shore up support. She needs them on site. She recognises now she can't just bully them. So she's gauging the reaction to modifying her policies, uh, which may be positive at the moment. They may be tentatively happy with the U-turns being made so far. They'd probably prefer it if they didn't have to be U-turns in the first place. But I can't imagine her performance in PMQs will have impressed them. She failed to defend her position at all. Even worse, she gave Starmer two free hits. Completely unforced errors. Interesting times comments. Bear in mind, two more PMQs before the next fiscal statement, because that's supposed to be on Halloween and the all-important OBR economic forecast. I would say then the real fun begins, but I do have a little weather eye on how the markets are going to react next week. You know, the Bank of England pulling their intervention. They have said that they will put it back again if there's major turmoil in the markets again. So they haven't said it's not coming back. They've just said that it is ending this week, um, just to be clear. And... You know, trust, but trust insisting there'll be no public spending because that's what the, at the moment, that's what the markets are assuming. Well, there'll be public spending cuts coming. There's been hints at it from Quarteng and trust, public spending cuts coming. Trust has announced in Parliament, in front of MPs, unequivocally, no public spending cuts. And there was no, she could have, she could have tried to say it in some sort of, you know, she could have tried to say something like no public services will be cut. No, no, no. She just said absolutely to the, to the question, no public spending cuts. If I was a city trader, I'd be thinking to myself, I'm not sure the Chancellor's going to announce a budget here without a massive hole in it. So I'm not sure that's going to calm them down. But we can wait for next week to see. But there we are. Those are my thoughts anyway. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.